Hi friends, this is the fourth masterclass on fertility, which I'm going to be conducting on Instagram. Now, often we see as a referral unit that you will end up seeing patients in whom previous genetic testing has already been performed. There is a history of multiple abortions. So she has six abortions in her marital life so far. Four of them were spontaneous miscarriages, all right? What typically happens in this situation is when the couple is like this, when they've had a second marriage, both of them, you know, there could be something which would have happened due to multiple abortions in the past. We have had the karyotyping of the husband and the wife both. The wife's karyotyping is absolutely normal, but the husband karyotyping is indicative of lengthening of satellite in the long arm of chromosome 22, which is a normal variant. So that means the man is going to be otherwise fine, sperm count is fine, he is going to be phenotypically fine, working, doing everything. But this can be one of the causes for having multiple abortions in the past. So rightly so, one of our colleagues has recommended to do IVF. They did the IVF and they gave with one low mosaic embryo which was transferred and there were a total of two another high mosaic embryos. When I mean that an embryo is genetically tested and it is a mosaic embryo, that means the risk of having chromosomal abnormalities is more than 30%. Now when we say it's a high mosaic or a low mosaic, usually when the abnormalities are between 50 to 70%, it is a high mosaic and between 30 to 50% is a low mosaic. Then why did we transfer a low mosaic embryo? Because remember friends, God does something called as auto-correction of these embryos. This report is basically at the time of testing that embryo. Lot of genetic rearrangements keep on happening in these embryos for the first eight to nine days after having fertilization. And as a result of this, when we do the biopsy, we can have a mosaic embryo which may then get auto-corrected by nature, by God, and it will turn out to be a euploid embryo post-implantation. And that is the reason low mosaic embryos can be transferred. This low mosaic embryo did not give rise to pregnancy and the other two were high mosaic, which we normally don't transfer. But yes, there is controversy regarding this that should you transfer a high mosaic or not, right? But we normally don't transfer, so rightfully so, one of our colleagues where the IVF has been done has not transferred these embryos. Now this couple is here after this entire history for doing further evaluation. So what are we going to recommend? The first thing which we will recommend them is to do something called as whole exome sequencing. Now that is a detailed analysis of the genetic structure of both the partners, it is expensive on an average if you try to do it with this type of a history, it is going to cost the couple around 50, 55,000 rupees to get both the partners evaluated. After that report comes in, we will do further genetic counseling for the couple and we will also do non-invasive chromosomal studies one time more. Usually, once the NICS is done and if there is a euploid embryo, we are virtually trying to tell the patient that look, we are transferring a chromosomally normal embryo inside you. The chances for abortion is going to be very low, provided we have tested the uterus. That means provided we have tested the anatomy completely. These are situations where we would mandatorily be doing an APLA testing for the female partner to make sure that there is no driven immunological factor which may give rise to an abortion because previously she has not been tested for that. After doing this detailed counseling, we will be doing embryo transfer inside this couple with a euploid embryo. Remember, these are not situations where you must probably do any immunological assays till there is a known immunological cause because you have some genetic cause. This genetic cause, though it is normal for the male partner, it could be one of the reasons why embryos are not forming correctly. Do we have an option to recommend donor sperms to these patients? We must give it to them in writing that if they don't want to do this, they can consider donor sperms. But if we don't know the sperm donor is also having a similar genetic condition or not. So it may or may not give rise to a successful implantation even then. And that is a very important point of counseling unless you have done a genetic study of the sperm donor as well, which is extremely common and you know, extremely rare to see something like that in a country like India. This should be our counseling for this type of patients, which is why I said that now the master classes which I will be doing on Instagram are real life patients, real life situations which we 
as a referral unit for fertility is going to handle and when we handle these types of patients these case discussions are going to give you practical solutions as to how should you go about doing these patients and counseling them when they come to see you any more questions and doubts regarding this you can post in our comments and i'll be very happy to answer